so unit number 12 transportation engineering transported transportation engineering carries uh, nine marks weightage in examination question number 166 the highest point on cross section of road surface is called dash question number 166 the highest point on cross section of road surface is called dash and the options are option a crown option b camber option c gradient and option b burn these are the options and here we have a typical cross section of an road so this width is called a carriage way carriage way means where the traffic will flow that portion of the road is considered as a carriage way then the highest point of the cross section of the road is called crown then the slope from the crown to the edge of road is called a camber then side drains are provided to drain of the rain water so the answer for this question is the highest point of cross section of road surface is crown option a crown is the right answer Question number 167. The value of rolling gradient in plane as per IRC is. Question number 167. The value of rolling gradient in plane as per IRC is. And the options are option A 1 in 10, option B 1 in 20, option C 1 in 30, option D 1 in 40. Here the gradient means the rise and fall of the road section along its the length is called gradient of a road. Here with respect to the road terrain, we are going to decide the gradients of the roads. For plain terrain and for the hilly regions, we have a different gradients. The gradients values are limiting by the IRC. Here IRC means Indian Road Congress. This constitutional body will give us the values for a plane gradient and a terrain gradients. Here options are A 1 in 10, option B 1 in 20, option C 1 in 30 and option D 1 in 40. For plane surfaces the rolling gradient is 1 in 30. Therefore the right answer for this question is option C 1 in 30. Then the maximum gradient is 1 in 10. Maximum gradient is 1 in 10 and uh, rolling gradient for plane is 1 in 30. Question number 168. The next question number 168. The penetration test on bitumen is conducted to find out. Question number 168. The penetration test on bitumen is conducted to find out. And the options are option A, grade of bitumen, option B, viscosity, option C, ductility, option D, none. So, we are going to conduct the different testers on the bitumen for the different parameters, to identify different parameters. To know the viscosity of the bitumen, we are going to conduct the tar viscometer test. For the viscosity, we are going to conduct the test called tar viscometer test. Then for ductility, we are going to conduct elongation test. Here the question is, penetration test on bitumen is conducted to find what? Therefore, option B is for tar viscometer test, option C is elongation test. Therefore, the right answer for this question is option A, grade of the bitumen. The penetration test is conducted to determine the or find out the grade of the bitumen. Question number 169. The width of carriage way in single lane road as per IRC should be. Question number 169. The width of carriage way in single lane road as per IRC should be. And the options are option A 3.75 meter, option B 5.5 meter, option C 7.5 meter and option D 7 meter. Here we know that we have a different lane roads, single lane road, then double lane road, double lane with curve, double lane without curve, 
and six lane, four lane highways are also we know that. Here IRC restrict the width of lanes for the different types of highways. A Indian Road Congress now in Martha Rentandre, road width and display above the limit market. That was standard width and our year with them. A Indian Road Congress now in Editor, Ade Prakaranau, road width and the Provacarate. Illy, question in a tenthandre, the width of carriageway in single lane road as per IRC should be and the dedicated. Option so like in our road are there 3.75. Option A 3.75, option B 5.5. Option C is 7.5 and option D is 7. First, this is the options that we have to do. Option B is 5.5 meter. Option B is the width of intermediate carriageway but not single lane road. Then option C is 7.5 meter. 7.5 meter is 2 lanes with curb width. 2 lane road with curb again 7.5 meter as per IRC. Then option D7 is the width of 2 lane road without curb. Then the right answer for the question the width of carriage way in single lane road as per IRC should be 3.75 meter. Option A 3.75 meter is the right answer for the question. Next question, question number 170, the most common binder used in flexible pavement is, question number 170, the most common binder used in flexible pavement is, and the options are, option A, lime, option B, vitamin, option C, cement, and option D, none. So these are the options, and the question is, which binding materials are commonly used for the flexible pavement? We know that we have two different types of pavements. One is a flexible pavement and another one is a rigid pavement. The tar roads are called as flexible pavement. For tar road construction we are using flexible pavement. Then for concrete roads we call it as a rigid pavement. Here the most common binding material for flexible pavement the right answer is bitumen. Option B, bitumen is the most common binder material used for the flexible pavement. And the cement is the most common binder material for rigid pavement. For concrete roads, we are using the cement as a most common binding material. Therefore, the answer for the question is option B, bitumen. Next question, question number 171. The width of ballast section of a track in BG as per IS is the width of ballast section of a track BG as per IS is and the options are option A 3.35 meter, option B 2.25 meter, option C 1.83 and option D 5 meter. First we need to know what is meant by BG. In Indian railways, we have two different, three different types of uh, tracks with respect to the gauge of the track. Gauge means for uh, railways, we have two rails. We laid two rails. The inner to inner distance of the two rails is called gauge. With respect to gauge width, we are going to classify the uh, track as three types. And uh, those are NG, MG and BG. Here NG means narrow gauge, then BG means, sorry, MG means meter gauge, BG means broad gauge. These are the different types of the gauges we are using in Indian railways. But narrow gauges or meter gauges are absoluted. Nowadays all the tracks are constructed as broad gauges. Ballast section means below the sleeper. Rails are placed over the sleeper. Below the sleeper, we are going to lay the boulders or stones. The bottom width of this stone section or this stone is called ballast section. In this question, they ask us what is the width of ballast section for broad gauge as per IRC. Their options are 3.35, 2.25, 1.83, and 5. As per Indian standard, the ballast section width for narrow gauge is 1.83, 2.25, 1.83, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 
for meter gauge is 2.2 mm for broad gauge is 3.35 here the given gauge is broad gauge therefore the right answer for the question is option a 3.35 meter this is the right answer for the question width of bar section for, of a track in broad gauge is 3.35 meter as per is Next question, question number 172 is the minimum formation width for double line broad gauge in embankment as per IS. The question number 172 is the minimum formation width for double line broad gauge in embankment as per IS, Indian standards. And the options are option A 6.1 meter. Option B 5.5 meter, option C 10.7 meter, and option D 10.10 meter. These are the options for the question. To answer this type of questions, you need to remember the below mentioned table. This table will help us to track this type of questions or to answer this type of question. We need to remember this table. Here we have a type of track for a broad gauge for meter gauge and for narrow gauges and we lay the railway tracks in two situations one is in cutting another one is embankment cutting means we are going to lay the railway tracks below the normal ground level this type of tracks are called tracks laid in cutting embankment means the railway tracks are laid above the normal ground level this type of tracks are called tracks laid in embankment here for cutting, we have single lane track and double lane track. Then for embankment, also single track and double track. If broad gauge is used in cutting for single track, it is 5.49 meter. For double track, 10.210. In embankment, 6.10 for single track, 10.82 for double track. For meter gauge in cutting single track, it is 4.27 meter, double track 8.27 meter. In embankment, meter gauge in embankment, single track 4.88 meter, double track 8.84 meter. The narrow gauge in cutting, single track 3.35 meter, double track 7.01 meter. Narrow gauge in embankment, single track 3.7 meter, double track 7.32 meter, 7 meter is the formation widths of different gauge and different lane tracks or line tracks. Here the question is minimum formation width for double line broad gauge track. Here we have broad gauge in embankment minimum formation width is 10.82. Here, the option C is the right answer for the question. 10.70 meter is the right answer for the question. So, the next question is 173. Rising of water level on upstream side of the river due to construction of bridge is known as question number 173 is rising of water level on upstream side of the river due to construction of bridge is known as and the options are option A afflux, option B waterway, option C coffer dam and option D cation. These four are the options for the question. Here the question is the rise of water level on the upstream side due to the construction of bridge. And the right answer for this question is option A of flux. The rise of water level in the upstream side due to the bridge construction is called a flux. Then waterway is the width of water which is passing under the bridge. Then coffer dam is a structure which is constructed to the divert the water at the dam construction site. Then question number 174. The triangular portion or semicircular portion provided on downstream side of a pier is cut. Question number 174 is the triangular portion or semicircular portion 
provided on downstream side of pier is cut and the options are option a eased water option b cut water option c buffer option d none these four are the options here the question is the triangular or semicircular portion of pier on downstream side is called what that is the question here pier means the intermediate supports provided for the bridge is called piers on piers we have a two sides one is upstream side and the other one is downstream side so yav kade inda namage water enter aagutte bridge bridge side ge aa side na now upstream side antu andre karithivi then bridge inda pass aagi yav kade move aagutte aa portion na downstream side antu andre karithivi So here we are going to provide the triangular or semicircular portion. Now prediction note is that pier garden note is that rectangle shape or like a, or even if it is not flat, that is construct matter is not. So yeah, that is the prediction note is that piers are constructed, uh, pier faces are constructed either triangular or semicircular. Yeah, can you understand? So the reason is to reduce the फोर्स ऑफ वाटर आती है पीएम पीएम में ले वाटर फोर्स है ना रेड्यूस मारने के लिए मारते हैं इधर ट्रायंगल और सेमी सर्कल आर पोशन है ना यूज मारते हैं बोथ साइड और अपसिम साइड और डाउनसिम साइड वी आर यूजिंग ट्रायंगल और सेमी सर्कल आर पोशन सो ट्रायंगल और सेमी सर्कल आर कंबिनेशन अलावा � triangular portion or semicircular portion is used on upstream side then it is called cut water if the same structure triangular portion of semicircular used in a downstream side triangular or semicircular portion used in downstream side then it is called cut water therefore the right answer for this question is option a is water Option A is what is the right answer. If the triangular or semicircular portion is used on upstream side, then it is called cut water. If the triangular or semicircular portion is used on downstream side, then it is called ease water. The right answer for this question is ease water.